For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Drew Backey. This is A Week in Washington. And you know what? Let's just go ahead first. All right, good folks, let's get started. First up today, we have hopeful information on the coronavirus vaccine. Then, our first guest, Mr. Chaco Latte. And finally, how all of this affects us. By the way, a little teaser for next week, we have our first real guests on the show. Anyways, let's get started. Earlier this week, pharmaceutical giant Pfizer started to administer the first doses of its new vaccine. And while many are rejoicing at the glimmer of hope that we so desperately need, Many are concerned that it is too early and that the vaccine's side effects have not been fully discovered. Anyways, Britain authorized the emergency use of the vaccine while it is continuously researched. Earlier this week, the first person in the world to have access to this vaccine received it. She is a 90-year-old Englander named Margaret Keenan. This is a glimmer, no, more like a big old Death Star beam of hope that we really need. This is the first true, honest piece of good news we have received in months. Congratulations, Margaret. Anyways, on to politics. This week was another very politically turbulent week, with the Tex Texas Attorney General Kent Paxton filing a legal suit that asked the Supreme Court of the United States to overturn the election in three separate states. The Supreme Court heard the case immediately and threw it out faster than any case before. It took them all of 32 minutes to recertify the election results in Wisconsin, Georgia, and Michigan. Also, the president is continuing what late night host Jimmy Kimmel seems to be calling hashtag Squattergate. For more on this, we turn to our very own comedian, Choco Latte. Hey, Drew. Thanks for having me home. No problem, Choco. Well, you have me here to talk about Squattergate, so I guess I'll just start talking now. So basically, Squadgate is a term that Jimmy Kimmel, the comedian, assigned to the president's refusal to concede the election. And why hasn't the president conceded the election? Well, Drew, for many reasons. First off, it would make him look humble. <laughs> also, it would go against everything he's been saying for the past five to six months. Do you think the president will concede before Jan 3rd, or will Nancy Pelosi be sworn in as the next president? Hmm. Honestly, I don't think that the president has any intention of conceding. His rhetoric is angled ever so slightly to stop pushing Republicans away from him. In fact, every sign indicates that he wants Republicans to agree with him or get kicked out of the way. It seems that he has no intention of getting out of the way himself in time. Well, thank you for your time, Chaco. And we hope to see you here again soon. That was a special report from our very own Mr. Chaco Latte. Anyways, on to how this affects us. So Margaret Keenan received the vaccine, and that's really great news. And we shouldn't be feeling excited and thrilled because, well, now that she has it, within the next six months to a year, with proper management, we'll have distributed the vaccine throughout the world, and we might be even be able to take our masks off. Get ready, folks, because times are changing, and we may even return to our old way of life by 2022. Also, times are changing in politics as well, and it seems that the era of presidents conceding peacefully has passed. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been A Week in Washington. Thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already.